Hi, thanks for watching. Um, this is part two of a video. In the first part of the video, if you have watched it, um, that we were configuring various VLANs on the UniFi network. Um, for example, for IoT devices, one for a guest network, and also we were configuring the appropriate wireless networks as well. Um, if you haven't watched the previous first part of the video, I do strongly recommend you do this because these firewall rules follow on from the uh, previous video. So, um, first of all, we need to get started. So, you need to be logged in to your UniFi network control panel. Uh, in this case, I'm using a UDM Pro. Um, so, from the dashboard, you need to click on the settings cog at the left hand side which is the gear icon or cog icon whichever you prefer to call it so click there and then from that you need to go down to firewall and security select that from the left hand side so once you've clicked on firewall and security we can start configuring the firewall rules and the first rule will be to allow all established and related traffic. Um, I won't go into detail of explaining what each firewall rule does, but you do need to create each rule as I'm explaining here in order to get the results of, that you want, which will also block into VLAD traffic um, between the networks. The main network will be able to access any device on the VLAN which is what we need and also I'll be setting up another firewall rule to allow access from the IoT network and clients to my NAS server because this acts as a media server so let's get started so once you've clicked on firewall and security the first thing you'll need to do is click create new rule under the firewall rules section here and the type for this new rule needs to be selected as LAN in. Make sure you do select LAN in. In fact all of these selections must be selected carefully otherwise you can restrict access to your UDM Pro or network application from any device and once you've done that you'll have to factory reset your unified network host to grant access and that can take a lot of time having to set it up again from scratch. So as I said you need to select the type as a LAN in and then the description. I tend to put my first name against the description first so that when you look at the firewall rules in the future you know which ones you've created and they're not part of the default rules that the uh, UniFi network has created automatically itself. So once you've typed your name in the description and then next to it you need to type allow all established forward slash related traffic and then the rule applied should be before predefined rules. The action should be selected to accept. The IPv4 protocol should be left as all, which is the default selection in there. Under source, you need to select source type as port IP group. Then the IPv4 address group should be selected as any which are the default options in there. The port group is also selected as any, which is default. And the destination is, should be selected under destination type as port IP group. The IPv4 address group should be any, and again the port group should be any. And then under advanced, you need to select the manual option, and then under the advanced states option you need to tick match established 
and match state related. So make sure that match state established and match state related are both ticked. Then click apply changes. So that's the first firewall rule configured. So now moving on to the second firewall rule, click on create new rule. The type is LAN in. The description again, I put my name first and then you need to call the description allow main LAN to access all VLANs. What this does is allow any device connected to your main network or main LAN, whichever you want to call it, to access any device on the VLANs. For example, if you have voice over IP telephones in a VLAN, then it will allow for your PC or computer connected from your main LAN to access the web interfaces of any voice over IP telephones on the VLANs. And the same thing probably applies to uh, any other device that has a web configuration interface. So the rule moving down, the rule applied needs to be before predefined rules and the action is accept. The IPv4 protocol should be left as all, which is the default selection in there. So then moving down to source, you need to select the source type as a network. The network will be main LAN. The network type is default IPv4 subnet. Then down to the destination section, you need to enter the destination type as port slash IP group. And then under the IPv4 address group, you need to select the option to create new group. Then once the window port and IP groups appears on the screen here, you need to select the profile name. In this, I will put my name and then it needs to be called RFC1918. And then make sure the IPv4 address subnet is selected and then move down to the grey box under that and type in the following IP address, address groups of 192.168.0.0 then forward slash 16 and then click add. Enter the next IPv4 address group of 172.168.0.0 forward slash 12, click add. Then the third and final one you need to enter is 10.0.0.0 forward slash 8 and then click add. And then once you have entered those three addresses of 192.168.0.0 forward slash 16 and 172.0.0 16.0.0 forward slash 12 and 10.0.0.0 forward slash 8. You can then click on create new group. Then it should take you back to the main firewall creation rule window. So under the IPv4 address group, it should now be showing us RFC 1918 which this is then the port group you need to select should be the default as any and then for advanced you can leave that on auto so then click apply changes so that's the second firewall rule created so for the third firewall rule you need to click on again create new rule the type you need to select again as LAN in, then the description, again my name, and then type in allow access to NAS from 
IoT VLAN. What this will do is allow any devices, as I explained earlier, on the IoT VLAN to access my NAS server for streaming media to smart TVs, for example. So it will allow traffic and just allow it to that selected IP address for the, the NAS. So once you've entered the description, the rule applied option should be before predefined rules. The action is accept. The IPv4 protocol should be selected as all the default option. And then under source type, you need to select network. Then under network, you need to select the IoT VLAN. Then the network type should be left as IPv4 subnet. And moving down to the destination section here, you need to select the destination type as IP address. So then under the IPv4 address section, you need to enter the IP address allocated to your NAS server or the device that you want to allow access to on your main network. Um, in order to find the IP address, you can go into the web panel of your NAS device or you can go into the Unify Network device list and it will tell you what IP address has been allocated to that. I would recommend going into your NAS control panel and setting a static IP address. It should be fairly straightforward and there should be some uh, help on the internet on your NAS server. In this case, my IPv4 address for my NAS server is 192.168.1.30. Then under advanced, you can leave it selected as auto and click apply changes. Then for the fourth and final firewall rule, we need to select create new rule again. The type needs to be selected as LAN in. So under description, you need to show it as your name again, and then it needs to be entered as block or inter VLAN traffic. And this rule stops devices on the various VLANs communicating with each other. So moving down to rule applied, you need to select that as after and then under action you need to change that to drop the IPv4 protocol should be selected as all in the source section should be selected as port IP group and then the IPv4 address group select from the pull down list RFC 1918 and then the port group should be left as default any then moving down to the destination section you need to select the destination type as port IP group and then under IPv4 address group you need to select from the drop down list RFC 1918 then under the port group you can leave that selected as the default any and under advanced leave that as auto and then click apply changes so that configures the four firewall rules so in order to test this I have my smartphone connected onto the IOT wireless network so if I show you the screen I have a terminal and if I type as a ping command 192.168.1.40 which is the IP address of my printer allocated on the main LAN, you will see that there was no ping request returned, so it's unable to see the printer from the IoT VLAN onto the main network, which is correct. So then if we go to, again, ping 192.168.1.30, which is the 
static IP address of my NAS, you will see that it will allow traffic from the IoT network just to the NAS device, which is correct, which is what we wanted for streaming media. If we then go to a command prompt on my PC, and this will show you that it still allows access to any devices connected to the VLANs. For example, I have uh, a voice over IP telephone which has a web configuration interface that I do often access from my desktop PC. So on the command prompt window, we type in ping 192.168.2.52, which is one of the IP addresses allocated to my voice over IP phones. Press enter and you will see that it's responding with pings. So devices on the uh, IoT or other VLANs can still be accessed from the main PC, from the main network. So then if we go back to the screen on the mobile window, which is connected wirelessly to one of the VLANs and try and ping an IP address on another VLAN, as you can see, this IP address is 192.168.2.52 and it's the IP address of one of my voice over IP telephones on a different VLAN to what the mobile phone is connected to. You'll see that it will not respond to any ping request, so it's unable to see any devices on the different VLANs. So those firewall rules are actually working. So that completes the uh, setting up of the firewall rules. So from the firewall rules list should be allow all established related and the next one down from the top should be allow mainland to access all VLANs. The third one should be allow access to NAS from IoT VLAN and the fourth and final one should be block all inter VLAN traffic. So once you have created all those firewall rules, um, please note that you will still be able to ping the gateway on any network from any device, but this shouldn't really matter if you have a strong password to set up on your unified network web interface, then devices shouldn't be able to access this anyway without the correct password. And also, if you have two-factor authentication enabled, then it will make security accessing the gateways even stronger. So now that you've finished configuring the firewall rules, I would recommend that you take another backup. And uh, just a quick tip on how to do this. If you go the top right corner of the web interface and select Unify OS. This will take you back to the main Unify OS screen and then select the settings cog from the left hand side. Then under system from the left hand side select download backup. This will then download to your local PC a full backup of all configurations on your unified OS and also the unified network. So you can use this backup and it will restore a full backup of all the devices connected on your unified network. All configurations and everything regarding the unified OS as well click save backup and that downloads the full backup so thanks for watching this video if you found this video helpful please hit the like button and it would be helpful if you could hit the subscribe button as well keep an eye out for further videos in the future